ever wondered how huge networks stay organized, secure, and efficient without running hundreds of separate cables. This is possible by the use of VLANs. In the next few minutes, I'll show you how virtual LANs slice one physical network into multiple smart, secure, and isolated segments, and why every network admin needs to master them. VLANs stand for Virtual Local Area Network. Using VLANs, we can virtually separate our LANs into smaller chunks. But why would we want to do that? Well, there are a few reasons why we might want to use VLANs. One of the main reasons is something we've already spoken about, and that is broadcast traffic. So, let's review broadcasts. A LAN is a single area of a network, and in this case, we have a single broadcast domain, created by our switch. If host sends a broadcast, then every device will receive it. That's fine for our four computer network, but let's imagine each computer represents an entire department. Broadcast traffic can start to slow down our networks and devices very quickly. So, we definitely need a way to manage all of this traffic. One way is to add a router. This would create separate broadcast domains per interface, but it's an extra bit of hardware to purchase, install, cable, and manage. Another more radical option is to physically split the network into separate sections. This would create broadcast domains for each department. Traffic wouldn't be sent from one department to the other. This drastically reduces our broadcast overhead. Let's say we wanted to add a new department. Both options would require work to set up, and we don't want to do that. This is where VLANs come in. VLANs give us all of the benefits of physically separating our network, but with the added bonus of being able to do this virtually. The traffic still behaves in the same way as if it were physically split. Traffic isn't forwarded to any other departments, and it's almost like having four miniature switches inside our single one. The way this works is by assigning interfaces to specific VLAN. Only interfaces in the same VLAN can communicate with each other. In this example, finance is yellow, IT is red, sales is green, and HR is purple. I'm using colors, but in reality you will probably use numbers such as VLAN 10, VLAN 20, etc. If we wanted to add a new finance server, then we would just need to assign that interface to the finance virtual LAN. And communication between those two interfaces is allowed, because they are on the same VLAN. If we wanted to add a brand new marketing department, then we just create that VLAN and assign it to an interface. As you can see, virtual LANs make it very easy to control broadcast domains, and it is also scalable. We don't need new equipment or to recable everything anytime you want to make a change. So, that is the overview of a virtual LAN. We will now look at how this works in a bit more detail. Cisco and most other switches have a default VLAN called VLAN 1. Every interface is assigned the default fill and so this means every interface can talk to each other. From here we can start to make our own virtual LANs and split up our switch. We may want to make a virtual LAN called VLAN 10 and another called VLAN 20. You can add up to 4094 VLANs as this is the maximum number that is supported. So now, Interfaces assigned to VLAN 10 can only communicate with other interfaces assigned to VLAN 10, and it's the same for VLAN 20. Virtual LANs are not restricted to just one switch. We can have the same VLANs across multiple switches. This makes it very versatile and scalable, but this does leave us with a problem. 
if interfaces can only communicate with other interfaces in the SAMA virtual LAN, which virtual LAN do we assign to the link between our two switches? If we leave it as the default virtual LAN VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 won't be able to send traffic. If we assign it to one of our new VLANs, then only that VLAN can send traffic between the two switches. The solution is a special type of interface called a trunk. There are two types of ports on a switch, an access port and a trunk port. When a port is assigned to a virtual LAN like VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, here, this is known as an access port. An access port is designed for endpoint devices to access the network such as computers and laptops. Now, a trunk port can send traffic from different virtual LAN. They're used to send traffic between networking devices. This leaves us with another problem though. How does the receiving switch know which VLAN the traffic belongs to? The whole point of a VLAN is to separate traffic. So when a trunk sends data that could be from VLAN 1, VLAN 10 or VLAN 20, it needs a way to identify which virtual LAN that traffic belongs to. This is done by using something called a tag. To understand tags, we need to take a couple of steps back. Now, most devices, including computers, do not know what virtual LANs are. Some devices are VLAN aware, such as IP phones, but most are not. So, a computer generates a frame as normal. When that frame arrives at a switch, it's the switch that handles the VLAN. Then it's forwarded to the correct destination. The sending computer and the receiving computer have no idea that VLANs were used. Now, when we have multiple switches, connectudo, a trunk port, there is an extra step. The computer sends the frame as usual, but when the switch sends a frame over the trunk port, it adds a new bit of information. This is called an 802.1Q tag. 802.1Q is the IEEE standard. It can also be called .1Q. This tag is 4 bytes, and it contains a few bits of information. TPID or Tag Protocol Identifier. This is used to identify the frame as an 802.1Q tagged frame. It could also be ISL but is rarely used today. TCI or Tag Control Information. This contains three bits of information. The Priority DEI or Drop Eligible Indicator, and most importantly, the VLAN ID. This tag field is then read and removed by the receiving switch. So to recap, the frame is untagged when it's sent from the computer. It's tagged over the trunk port, and it's then sent to the destination computer untagged. And our computers are again none the wiser. The next thing we need to talk about is something called native VLANs. A native VLAN is configured per trunk interface. It's the VLAN that the switch assumes the frame is on if it arrives on a trunk port with no tag. By default, the native VLAN iVLAN 1. So, let's say both of our computers are assigned to the default VLAN 1. Just like before, the frame is sent untagged to the switch. Now, if a switch is sending a frame across a trunk port that belongs to its native VLAN, the frame is not tagged. When a switch receives a frame on its trunk port without a tag, it will assume that frame belongs to its native VLAN, which, in this case, is VLAN 1. It will then forward that frame to the destination, again, untagged. So you might be wondering, why do we use native VLANs? And there are a few reasons why. Hubs can't read or write tags. All hubs can do is forward frames. Let's say we have a hub in the middle connected to another host. Using untagged native VLANs means we can send frames to our new host. If we didn't use native VLANs and the frame was sent tagged, then the host will just discard the frame because it doesn't understand VLAN tags. 
so a native VLAN is configured per trunk interface. This can lead to problems. For example, let's say we change one side of our trunk to have the native VLAN of 20 instead of 1. We now have two switches with different native VLANs. Our computer will send the frame. As before, the first switch will see the interface is assigned to its native VLAN and then forward that frame untagged across the trunk. Do you see the problem here? The second switch will assume the traffic should belong to its native VLAN, VLAN 20 and the frame will not be sent to the destination computer on VLAN 1. Luckily, in real life, you will be alerted to this type of configuration on the switch. You'll probably see a message like this, saying native VLAN mismatch. And that brings us to the end of the video on virtual LAN. This video is part of our full CCNA course, which can be found in the description. So please, feel free to go and check that out. If you liked this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.